wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1033 of our trek, and it is time for Philosophy Friday. Each Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. As we continue on this trek called life, sometimes we have questions about life. So our Friday trek is a time where we can ask Gramps. Gramps will answer our questions that you would like to ask your dad or granddad, but for whatever reason, this is not possible. No matter how old we are, I know that all of us would like the opportunity to ask dad or Gramps questions about life in many areas. Understanding ourselves better and how others may interpret life through their paradigm will allow us to interact with each other with more love and compassion. This can be achieved by utilizing a profound tool called the Enneagram. The tool that we refer to as the Enneagram is a circle with nine interconnected points. Ennea refers to nine and Graham refers to a drawing. Check out today or a prior week's wisdom journal for a representation of it. Since many people attempt to set goals at the beginning of the year, I have included a fun Enneagram goal-setting guide in today's notes. It does a good job from a humorous perspective on representing how each type handles their goals. For additional insights, I do also recommend a book called The Road Back to You, written by Ian Morgan Cron and Suzanne Stabil. It is an excellent book about an Enneagram journey to self-discovery from a Christian perspective. We have concluded our deep dive into the nine personality types, which are the reformer, the helper, the achiever, the individualist, the investigator, the loyalist, the enthusiast, the challenger, and the peacemaker. Seven weeks ago, we began a series of episodes about the type combinations. What are the potential relationship benefits and issues with each combination? Covering all the 45 different potential type combinations will take several weeks, but will be valuable in understanding each other, regardless of what type you are and what type those that you interact with each day. Since we are exploring the Enneagram in detail, I would also recommend reading the Wisdom Journal for each Friday to see the diagrams presented each week. As helpful as the Enneagram is, though, keep in mind that it is only a tool and cannot replace nor usurp the precepts that are found in God's Word. We are responsible for all the decisions and actions that we make in life, and they must always be in harmony with God's precepts. So our question for the next several weeks will be, Hey Gramps, why do people act or react to situations and circumstances in life so differently? How can I gain wisdom to better understand myself and others so that I can love, serve, and minister to them on a deeper level? So let's jump right in with the Enneagram type combinations. And the first one today will be the Enneagram type 3, the Achiever, with the Enneagram type 7, the Enthusiast. What each type brings to the relationship. This is a highly complementary pair. Both types are self-asserted. They have high energy. They are outgoing and capable of being around people with relative ease. Both types bring optimism and a future orientation. They bring a sense of possibility and renewal in their relationship and to the enterprises that they become involved with. Threes can work alone more easily than sevens, although both types are stimulated by interacting with people and both can be excellent communicators of their ideals and values. Both are persuasive and articulate, often lively and attractive, making them sought after company. Both have a youthful orientation such that they feed off each other's energy. No other couple is as vivacious and gregarious as the three slash seven couple. This is probably the highest energy combination of any of the types, and they wholeheartedly engage in lots of activities, plans, and projects, with the emphasis on attaining the good life. The focus is on sociability, going out, having adventures together, and on realizing possibilities, and on finding personal fulfillment. To this mix, Threes bring sensitivity to people and how to communicate with them, a sense of propriety, appropriateness, and social conventions, as well as the ability to focus on goals and get them accomplished. Sevens bring a sense of fun and adventure, resilience, and not being overly concerned with failure. Sevens can be spontaneous in ways that are more helpful to the self-conscious threes. 
Sevens can bring a breath of knowledge and experience, boundless enthusiasm, and good spirits. Threes bring a focus on goals, on staying practical and grounded, and observing healthy limits. This can be a fun, articulous, generous pair, virtually sparkling with vitality and the joy of life. This can sometimes seem to others to be an almost magical couple. But what are the trouble spots or issues between an Enneagram Type 3 and an Enneagram Type 7? This is also an extremely volatile couple. There is almost too much electricity under one roof. The 3 7 pair always look like a great couple, but this can also mean having to live up to their own hype. They can be exhausting to keep up with, and their mutual qualities make it difficult to admit or to look at their problems seriously. They both feel the pressure of being fabulous and perfect all the time. Both types seem to be lighthearted and unconcerned, yet in their high energy routines, they often hurt each other without even realizing it. Often this results in a backlog of past hurts that have been suppressed until it's too late and too much damage has already been done. Depending on the level of their emotional health, Threes can become workaholics, completely focused on achieving success, building more prestige, and planning career moves with the care of a general, so much so that the relationships and family lives take a distinct second place, even at that. By contrast, sevens tend not to take their careers as seriously as threes, always feeling that if things do not go well in one job, they could just move on to something better. On the surface, threes seem to have as much self-confidence as sevens, but in reality, often they do not which is why they feel that they need to promote themselves and their accomplishments. Threes may be envious of the easy success of sevens, while sevens feel that too much fun and enjoyment is being sacrificed for the threes' focus on their career. Sevens may get the feelings that they only exist to prop up the three in various ways. Neither type wants to talk about their shortcomings, failures, or negative feelings, and so these topics tend to be avoided as long as possible. Often, either health or a career crisis will bring this to the surface. Sevens do not want to be trapped in a relationship that is no longer enjoyable. And threes do not want to be in a relationship that has failed. Once they doubt that the other is there for them, they turn towards self-centered attitudes, which further erodes the relationship. A break can come abruptly and permanently. Let's move on to the next type combination. The Enneagram Type 3, the Achiever, with the Enneagram Type 8, the Challenger. What each type brings to the relationship. These two types can form powerful and highly affected affiliations and can also have passionate, stimulating personal relationships. Both are assertive. Both 3s and 8s go after what they want in life. Both can be larger-than-life figures who are outstanding in some way and because both stand out in their social circles. They cannot help but notice each other and come to terms with each other. Either an alliance forms that will enhance both parties or a competition develops that will keep them apart. Surprisingly, eight strength and solidity gives threes permission to be more heartfelt. The eight feels reliable and threes seek safety to reveal their hearts. Eights also like seeing threes use the opportunities and rise to challenges they offer. On the other side, it helps eights to relax once they see that the three is competent and can do things on their own. Moreover, both threes and eights are action-oriented, pragmatic, care about getting things done, and are willing to take the lead to achieve goals. They both have a marked degree of self-confidence, at least outwardly. They can be persuasive, and they can cut their losses and change their goals when things are not working for them. To this mix, threes bring more awareness of others, a feeling for public relations, and for how to please people. They are often diplomatic and adaptable, both in relationships with eights and with others. Eight brings a forthrightness in expression, fearlessness, physical vigor, and a determination to achieve a personal vision. They bring solidity, decisiveness, and a kind of strength that the more flexible three gains confidence from. They want to be proud of each other and support each other's potentials and accomplishments. They tend not to compete with each other, and this may be surprising because both tend, in general, to be competitive with others. And what are some of the potential trouble spots or issues between an Enneagram Type 3 and an Enneagram Type 8? Threes and eights can be effective in the business world and in their professional careers where energy, determination to succeed, and personal drive are necessary. 
Those types tend to be workaholics, putting themselves under tremendous stress in order to achieve their goals and to hang on to whatever success that they have. Under sufficient stress, they may stop supporting each other and compete to top the other's achievements. Of the two types, eights are more openly controlling than the threes. All those threes will attempt to control situations covertly, which can arouse the eights' suspicion and lack of trust. Once trust is compromised, eights can become jealous and possessive, ordering the threes to do things to prove the, the personal loyalty to the eight. Threes may easily feel used or belittled, not adequately appreciated for their contributions or for their support to the eights. Eights begin to expect and demand loyalty, even obedience for their patronage and guidance. Threes begin to feel that they are losing the ability to pursue their own goals, that they have become an appendage to the eight. In response to this deteriorating condition, both types become manipulative to get what they want. Once they begin to do this with each other, trust and openness cannot be maintained. Moreover, neither threes nor eights are very skilled at talking about their real feelings or need, nor do they feel comfortable being vulnerable. For both, isolation and suspicion become the norm, and it can become difficult to break through. Eights may see threes as deceitful and untrustworthy. Threes may see eight as willful and vengeful, and they can fear being humiliated and co-opted for life. Eights ultimately want support for themselves and their visions. Threes want to be developing themselves and to be admired for their qualities. Battles over who is supporting whom will result. Whose agenda will prevail? A nasty, very personal breakup may follow because of this. And now let's move on to our third type combination for today. The Enneagram Type 3, the Achiever, with the Enneagram Type 9, the Peacemaker. What each type brings to the relationship. This is actually a fairly common pairing. Nines bring enormous support, encouragement, and a sense of pride to the three's accomplishments. Threes can feel that with the nines behind them, they are able to be themselves, explore their potential, and become the best mate, friend, or professional that they can be. Threes can help nines to properly value themselves, to have more self-respect, and to invest in their own development. Nines can help threes relax and find enjoyment in the simple things. Nines can give them permission not to drive themselves so much. Both types want to avoid conflicts and put a positive spin on things. Nines are usually genuinely optimistic and look at the bright side, while threes focus on being positive and hopeful and are careful not to let people see them down or depressed. Both types are sociable, idealistic, they usually enjoy caring for children, animals, and the underdog. Both are usually hardworking and want to achieve a degree of material success that will enable them to care for others in a kind of extended family, where everyone would be safe, comfortable, and thriving. They both want a pleasant, aesthetically pleasing home. To this mix, three spring energy, personal ambition, flexibility, and the ability to set and achieve long-term goals and efficiencies. Threes will energize the nines and bring change and excitement to the relationship. Nines bring a feeling of safety and steadiness, the assurance that the three is loved for themselves and not just for their achievements, and the feeling of not being judged or evaluated at every moment. Threes feel that they can let their hair down and really be themselves with the nines, who accept them just as they are. The sensuality of the nine and the attractiveness of the three can meet in a couple highly attracted to each other and attached by physical passion. In other three and nine couples, the need for comfort and security may be the main source of attachment and the pleasure that they get from each other. But what are some of the potential trouble spots or issues for the Enneagram Type 3 with the Enneagram Type 9? The three nine couple can almost be a case of too much of a good thing because both types are attracted to keeping the positive value in their lives alive. And there can be so much attachment to comfort and stability in their world that it becomes difficult to question the status quo and the routines that they get into. Neither of them want to bring up conflicts that they might have with each other. Nines are more likely not to want to talk about whatever is bothering them for fear of further endangering the relationships. But threes also do not want to express their complaints because doing so will risk rejection and may also expose the fragility or even falseness in the relationship. Nines feel that they are better off not to say anything and let things work out on their own if that is at all possible. 
if threes are heavily invested in having a perfect marriage to the outside world, it will become difficult to talk about their unhappiness in a relationship or the frustrations that they are feeling. Often the relationships will continue for a while as if nothing is wrong, even if the relationship is essentially over. Eventually, however, threes begin to feel unseen and unappreciated and that the nines are not really there for them, not really present in the relationship. The nine may be an excellent provider in a material sense, but under stress may begin to become emotionally absent. Feeling abandoned or rejected usually makes threes become depressed, although often they do not realize this since they are quite out of touch with their emotions. Threes can feel that nines are stifling them, whereas nines can feel that threes are too demanding and are spoiled. Sometimes crisis, an affair, or other major life challenges brings the deterioration of the relationship into awareness. They may go through cycles of breaking up and getting back together again, although the underlying problems are not really resolved. In this case, the real feelings and frustrations will continue and will eventually undermine the relationship. Well, that covers the eighth group of threes for a total of 24 out of the 45 possible type combinations. We will continue each week to look at additional three combinations as we work our way through all the numbers. And regardless of your personality type and the personality type of those you interact with, either in person or online, we must follow God's word as we are told in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And also in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Join us again next Friday as we explore further the Enneagram on our Ask Gramps episode. We will continue to explore type combinations and how best to maintain meaningful and productive relationships with each other. The information that we will discover will allow us to unlock who we are as we travel on our track of life and discover more about ourselves and others as we impact God's kingdom. I know that you'll find these insights interesting, practical, and profitable in living a rich and satisfying life. Our next track will be Meditation Monday, where we will help you to reflect on those most important areas of life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,032 daily treks or read the associated journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you on Monday.